Hello, today's musing of the day is on blockchain. And um, I just wanted to let you know that blockchain has been this really um, unattainable, un misunderstood concept for me for many, many years. And I've heard this term blockchain uh, for a long time. And I just thought, oh my God, that's so complicated. I have no idea. I'm not really a tech geek. Um, what has this got to do with me anyway? And so yesterday I just had this revelation of, I just think I want to learn about blockchain. <laughs> so today I'm going to talk a little bit about blockchain and what this actually could mean for you personally, but also so in your life, but also for your bright line eating journey. So first of all, um, I really wanted to say a lot of my ideas have come from, from uh, an author named Stephen P. Williams in a book called Blockchain. And I thought it was just a great overview of what this, what the heck blockchain is. So, um, so first of all, a little bit of background. Again, I'm not a technical or accounting person, and it was like, where do I start with this concept? So when you look at traditional financial ledgers, they usually come in two columns. We all know this. We've, we've run these kinds of things. We see this in the bank. So you've got a credit column and you've got a debit column. So with blockchain, we actually add a third column and that's called verification. So in the traditional financial ledgers, when you have credit and debit, you're then actually outsourcing the verification component to a third party. So be it the bank or an accountant or some other person. And they're the ones that you're trusting to verify the transaction between the credit and the debit. So what happens basically with blockchain is they're completely replacing that third party or their, that intermediary or that middleman. So the, the verification component is built into the system. So really in essence, that's what blockchain is. It's building in trust in the system. So what's really great about the blockchain is for daily transactions, um, that goes on between people. It's highly verifiable, and so it's very trustworthy. But the nice thing about it is it's also virtually unhackable and unalterable. So the average Joe Blow can't go in there and cook the books. As we have seen in previous cases like the Enron cases or the Lehman Brother cases, where we have all these people who are actually having other books hidden away, and they're showing you know the public something else. So in um, blockchain, that's not possible. And the reason for this is there's actually this interesting verification protocol that goes on. It's um, when information, like a type of a transaction or a contract goes into the chain, it goes in as, a, as data, like as a block. And when the block is, is gets added, it has to be verified in a specific system. The most normal protocol that's used is called um, the proof of work protocol. Now, this proof of work protocol kind of works like a CAPTCHA. Has anybody ever seen when you fill out an online form and at the very bottom, there's a whole bunch of squirrely numbers or pictures and it asks you to solve it to ensure that you're not some sort of mumbo jumbo robot that's coming in to screw up the machine? That's called a CAPTCHA. And so very similar to that in the blockchain world, there is these these proof of work protocols or these little special nodes called miners. And these miners go in and solve that CAPTCHA. And in blockchain terms, that CAPTCHA is, is a, a, a complex mathematical equation. And um, oftentimes called crypt cryptography. So it's a cryptography motion. And so when they solve that equation, those miners will get paid Bitcoin. So they get paid for solving it and verifying it and adding that new node of information into the chain. So in blockchain, the more nodes or data that's added, the stronger the chain becomes. And so you want to have as much data in there as possible. So, so that's kind of what blockchain is. It's basically an expansion of the internet but a much more verifiable system um, where it also will be displacing or if you will, disrupting those third party intermediaries, specifically banks. So what does this mean for us? 
Well, what's really cool about blockchain, in my opinion, is because we don't really, unless you're a programmer, you're not really going to be running into code or miners or, you know, proof of work protocols. But what you will be able to run into is a new thing called distributed or um, dis distribution apps or dApps. So a lot of us are probably familiar with apps, apps on your phone. Well, in the future, there'll be something called dApps. And these dApps are kind of similar to what Uber uses. So if you've ever actually gone on to a flag to, you know, an Uber taxi to take you, there's actually almost like a smart contract in there that says, you know, I come in, I get in, the, in your cab, the cab driver takes me to a specific location, they fulfill whatever that particular contract was, and then a payment is released. That is kind of like a DAP or, you know, there's a contract that exists, um, but the intermediary in that scenario is Uber. So I think what we're actually going to be seeing in the future is the removal of the Ubers or if anybody's ever used an organization called Fiverr, it's that you go on, you actually use, uh, you know, an agency or something to do something for you online. And as soon as they complete the task, they get their money. So once we can remove the intermediaries, um, you will be able to eventually have your own DAP. You'll be able to create smart contracts, say, for example, with a self-driving car, as an example. So instead of having Uber, you will be able to have a self-driving car. You set up a smart contract with them. You know, either you pick me up or take me there, or you actually set up smart contracts with your self-driving car of, you know, here's when you actually fill up with gas. Here's when you fix flat tires. Um, you know, here's when you get repairs. And every time your smart car achieves one of those tasks, it gets paid in Bitcoin. <laughs> so machines will actually make money. So much so that eventually your smart car will have enough money to buy another smart car. And you would do this at infinitum until you had a fleet of smart cars. So this for me is sort of the impetus or the catalyst for the new economy. And we're going to be calling this the DAOs or distributed autonomous um, organizations. You will become a DAO. So as opposed to corporations and big conglomerates being the people that make the money, everybody will have an ability to make money on their own. So why, and so this is really, really mind blowing stuff. I mean, I don't know if you are, but I just get really super excited when I think of this for a myriad of different reasons. Well, first of all, everybody thought the internet was going to blow the socks off the world. And it actually did. I mean, there's no doubt that the internet, you know, we see Nest, you know, with your thermostat, everything is programmable, lights, you can clap your hands and open blinds. I mean, the internet is everywhere. I mean, it's explosive. It's changed the face of the world. Um, however, the downplay with the internet is that only a few organizations have unfortunately monopolized it, like Alphabet, which is the parent company to Google, or Facebook. They monopolized it and they're making large amounts of money. The amazing thing about blockchain and DAOs, uh, distributed autonomous organizations, is it's now going to democratize how the internet can be leveraged and how people can make money. And I love the idea of democratization. I wrote a lot about this in my book. I wrote a book called The Healthcare Heretic. It's available on Amazon. And um, I love this concept of democratization. For example, YouTube has democratized um, the ability to be a pro producer of your own movies. And, um, you know, we see this, you know, 3D printing has democratized the ability for you to become a manufacturer. So we're going to see the same thing with blockchain. Blockchain is going to democratize the way that you actually make money or create value in the world. So this actually comes on the heels of something that I've been learning recently that in about 10 years, 30% um, of jobs are going to be replaced by artificial intelligence. So these smart learning machines, right, that are going to have algorithms to learn and expand. And let's be honest, machines don't need sleep. Machines don't need vacation pay. They don't need paternity leave. So this is coming and it's scary. And a lot of people are really scared because 25% of all jobs are actually based on the, on the um, automotive industry. So all of this, you know, discussion about self-driving cars and all these other things is, you know, what do we do? 
And, you know, so there's a whole discussion going on about what does it mean to be human and how are humans going to make money? Um, where is the value going to come from? And so, um, you know, what, and if we start talking about Bitcoin and, you know, how are we going to determine the value currency and how are people going to exchange and barter and, you know, based on the capitalist society that we've created. Um, so what's really interesting about blockchain is we're going to be, not only does it have, an, an, you know, a, a um, unprecedented level of transparency, but it also will have an unprecedented level of privacy. So it's got this really interesting dichotomy. So what I mean by privacy is we're no longer going to have our personal enemies on the internet, but we're going to have reputation. So it's going to be a really interesting translation from the privacy that we know about private details to details around our reputation. So being able to have rating and ranking based on how apt we are to serve and to um, complete the contracts that we do with various other transactions. So what I see is really exciting is on the heels of this concern of technology taking over and of us losing our humanness and being replaced by machines and no longer being able to provide value, I came across an amazing woman and her name is, um, uh, what is her name? Nicole Bradford. Yeah, Nicole Bradford is actually starting this whole movement around transformational technology. So she actually really believes that we are creating machines to do what it is that we want to do. She doesn't see this as being this you know, I, eyes of, uh, you know, um, you know, this sort of sci-fi fictional view of, um, you know, machines taking over and we becoming sort of this the sixth extinction, if you will. She sees it as, as us maneuvering and manipulating machines to serve us. So what she believes is that the next echelon of human transcendence, if you look at the Maslow's hierarchy of needs going beyond, um, the idea of, um, you know, affirming ourselves is transcendence, going beyond ourselves. And um, this, again, comes down to the Nietzsche belief of being able to overcome ourselves of the or the, the uber mention or the overman. So this is all built into histories and years of philosophies. So her belief is that we need to go into transcendence. And to be able to do this is we need to scale the concept of human well-being at an unprecedented level. So that um, machines are going to be there to support us so that we can actually endeavor this next transformation or evolution of human of transcendence. So um, using robotics, a, you know, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, virtual reality, neural feedback to be able to do these things in, uh, in, a, in a huge scalable way. So I'm actually really heartened by that. I think that, um, you know, hearing other people like Ismail uh, Malik, who also talks about um, humans coming in on artificial intelligence and blockchain in um, and what he calls, you know, on call for when things need to be arbitrated and uh, and how value is going to be created. So I'm just sinking my teeth into this entire world of blockchain, etc. Very exciting stuff. I am so intrigued. I hope you are, too. Maybe not, but you might have turned this on, turned this off by now. So what does this mean for Brightline Eating? Well, this whole idea around smart contracts and DAOs is I see as building a world where there's going to be smart machines everywhere. So going beyond automatic blinds that close or lights that you clap that close or, you know, fridges and, you know, thermostats, eventually everything will be integrated. Um, it's almost going to be like a transhumanist world. We'll be sort of cyber linked to machines. And this is actually coming up in the next 10 to 20 years. It's not something so futuristic that won't happen in your lifetime. So part of your Brightline journey is I think that we will eventually see us set, setting up smart contracts with our digital food scales um, that will actually be able to automatically measure um, and based on artificial intelligence, mix and meld and probably prepare your foods so that you're eating exactly what you need to in your food plan. You'll have smart contracts with your fridge that will be able to take inventory of the foods and know the food preferences that you have and will end up sending signals to your self-driving car to pick up groceries so that you can actually always have the food that you need so that your smart contracts with your oven and your digital food scale will be able to prepare the foods and measure it so that you're actually eating at the right time. Smart contracts with your cupboard so that they actually lock after all your meals are completed so that you're not tempted to eat further. 
And then smart contracts with different kinds of devices that you might have. Today, we actually have a device called Muse, but there might be different neurofeedback um, units that you would actually be able to put on to actually recalibrate your brain signals so that you would go from beta to alpha so that you'd actually get more easily or automatized into um, meditative and flow states so that you will be able to conquer your food indulgers and other rebels and defenders inside you. So I think that the possibilities are endless. I think that the bright line eating journey or being able to stay in a right size body or anything that you want in the future is going to be automatized. And we're going to be able to leverage machines through blockchain, smart contracts, and artificial intelligence to do all of these really cool things. So anyways, that's my musing for the day and wishing you well. Cheers.